What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode. This is episode number 51. We're starting today's just off with a brief little lead table on the back of the big episode number 50. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. 30 minute thank you special. And on the back of our draw away at Old Trafford right now in the Premier League. It's tight but we're not giving up on the top four just yet. West Ham tumbling down from league leaders to fourth. We're coming for you David Moyes. That Champions League spot is still up for grabs. Starting today's just off though. How about this? You've been waiting for it, as have I. Marcel de Conning, 58 overall to 67 jump up when I changed his position from striker to left wing. Five star, five star, high low work rate, inside forward with potential to be special. Yep, 91 to 94 potential was his range, which was set. We have got potentially the next global superstar out of the Southampton Academy. Took three years, but here we go. The only problem is, it's in a position where we can't really play him. We love our inside forwards, but on the left-hand side, we've got too many of them. Look, man, he's a Lewis Potter Johnston. I, I don't know how I'm going to get this guy game time next season. I think loaning him out is the best possible choice. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Even so... For the first game of today's episode here, on the back of no wins in three in all competitions, taking on Antonio Conte Spurs here in a dress rehearsal for the FA Cup semi-final at Wembley, plus a big battle for two teams with the outside shot of making the Champions League as well. An hour into the game as we were deadlocked at 0-0. Weren't too many chances to report. This is a really tense, nervy, cagey affair. I discussed them a lot when it's between two teams with so much at stake, so much to play for. It can often be a, a very, very tight and very, very nervy, tense affair with very few clear-cut chances on both sides, but Spurs took the two they got through the same guy. Brian Gill, the Spaniard who of course has been loaned back out after coming in this season in real life, scores a brace in the game. Hadn't scored a goal all season long. How typical is that? I often talk about it in big games so often. You come up against a forward or an offensive base player who hasn't scored a single goal in many weeks or possibly all season and he has a masterclass. He did in this game, scored his first two of the season as Spurs went tuning up whilst Lookman did bag a consolation with his eighth in 24 in stoppage time. It proved to be nothing other than a late consolation. Did I just say that? I think I did. Even so, two on the final score. Spurs get the win, and it's now one point from nine in the Premier League and no wins in our last three. So, we're not giving up. But this is a big, big blow. I talked about it. this month for March was going to be absolutely huge. Europa League last 16. FA Cup quarter final. We did our job in the Cups, but in the Premier League, not so much. One win out of four, and that came against Fulham at the start of the month, means we dropped a sixth in the table, eight games to go. Look, there's still time. We're seven points off West Ham, and we've still got the game in hand as well. But drop into sixth, and it's so congested, all the way down to Spurs in 10th place, who just got to win against us there. It really is anyone's guess. I was just getting at a final uh, Champions League spot in fourth place. West Ham clinging to it after a horrendous run of form. But the Foxes, us, Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs, all going for that one Champions League spot. And at the moment, it could be anyone. Also, uh, finally, I just want to say real briefly, let's show you a scouting update and academy update here as well plus the fixtures for April. Um, on Friday afternoon, I uploaded a video, episode number 45, and uh, I titled it Rabona Goal. Do you want to say real briefly, thanks to everyone that corrected me, um, that was an error on my part. It wasn't a Rabona Goal I scored, it was a Rainbow Flick Goal. Yeah, you'd think by now, after all the years playing FIFA, I'd know my skill moves, I'd know my Rabonas from my Rainbow Flicks, but yeah, just a real brief way to point it out. Thanks to those that did correct me in the comments section, but... Um, yeah, my mistake, guys. On Friday afternoon, there was not a Rabona goal in the episode. It was a rainbow flick goal. My error. Just want to apologise for it very briefly indeed there. I'll make mistakes. I'm human. Just one of those things. But uh, yeah, no Rabona goal, but a rainbow flick goal. Just wanted to point it out. And thanks to everyone that did point out as well to correct me. Um, still, look at our features for April. As you can see, uh, we've got both legs of the Europa League quarter final against Fiorentina. Both coming today. Aston Villa, Steven Gerrard side at home. We thrashed us 4-0 on the opening day. Chelsea, the bag is away. Oh, Arsenal at home, big Premier League games this month, and uh, oh yeah, the small matter of the FA Cup semi-final at Wembley against Spurs. So I said March was a bit of a make or break month, what does that make April? Make or break times 10, this is absolutely huge as we try and keep our Champions League dreams alive. There are two routes to the competition, winning the Europa League and finishing in the top four. We've got a golden chance at both, but can we do both? 
And can we also reach our first ever FA Cup final with the save with Spurs coming at Wembley this month as well? Well, we're going to find out this month what is going to happen to this Southampton team come the end of the season. You know the saying, pressure makes diamonds or burst pipes. What are we made of? So, yeah, first game of this episode on the back of none, uh, no wins in our last four. Fiorentina away in Tuscany. Second game today, sorry. Fiorentina away in Tuscany. Taking on the Serie A side right now. Going for a Champions League spot in their league themselves. Massive battle here away in Florence against the four and a half star team. They hit the post twice in the game as we were still tied at 0-0. Not that many chances, but very good chances being created, if that makes sense. Clear opportunities for both teams, including right here. 55 minutes in. Brennan Johnson denied by Dean Henderson. The former Red Devil will be making a great save on Johnson. Still 0-0. And then denying a Brett Gize, our top scorer in Europe as well. I couldn't believe it was still goalless because whilst there weren't that many chances, the quality of chances were really high. I felt for sure an opening goal was coming. Both English shot stoppers making great saves. Pickford on one end, Henderson on the other with 22 minutes to go. He's their star, he's their main man, he's 89 rated and he's open to scoring. I knew going through this tie was going to depend on keeping this guy quiet. Federico Chiesa bangs in the opener. Fiorentina lead. 1-0 away in Florence. One minute to go. Down by a goal. Couldn't afford a defeat to take back to St. Mary's. Gareth Bale does it again. The Welsh wizard big game player with a minute of normal time to go. Rescues a draw in Tuscany and will take a 1-1 scoreline back to St. Mary's. What a moment with so many iconic moments in this guy's career. He's just added yet another one in potentially his final season in pro football. Oh my god, I tell you, my heart was in my mouth when I was running down the flank with Johnson. Got in behind the last man and I saw Bale in the middle and I was thinking, right, I'm pretty decent at cutting the ball across to the six yard area in this year's FIFA and finding the open man. But I know it's going to be Bale's weaker right foot or he hits the ball. I was thinking, just get it on target. Like, just get it on target and I've got a chance. And he just about bends it past Dean Henderson to rescue the draw. No wins in five in all competitions. Yes, don't get me wrong. That's pretty poor form. But it could have been so much worse. Oh, my God, the relief. Gareth Bale keeps our Europa League dreams alive as we head back to St. Mary's Tide at 1-1. No way goes in European ties now, as we know. So, we don't need to play lockdown defence in the second leg to make it through. But, hopefully, I'll be a little bit stronger after Fiorentina hit the woodwork twice in the game and got a goal as well. If we are to make it through, we'll have to be a little bit tighter and more clinical as well, no doubt. So, yeah, third game of season. So, third of four taking on Steven Gerrard Aston Villa. Looking for revenge here after they thrashed us 4 nil on the opening night. Things have been a little bit different since then, but Aston Villa right now also going for a Champions League place as well. So taking them on here, big game for both teams. Che Adams opened the scoring, eighth in the Premier League this season. I've been a little bit critical of Adams this year, particularly domestically in the Premier League, but he's not been that bad. Eight in 26, averaging just under one in every three. That's not terrible. And 54 minutes since we were still leading by one. Pickford made a great save right before the break and then nine minutes after the restart. Oh my goodness. We were talking about Marcel earlier and why I can't give this guy any game time. This man's the reason why. Adam Mola, look man, has been consistently brilliant all season long and he's won away from it in double digits in the Premier League this year. Saints 2, Aston Villa 0. Could have gone 3 up 20 minutes to go. Great save by Emmy Martinez. Keeps it at 2-0. Aston Villa clinging to life in the game as we still had a two-goal cushion and late on as John McGinn turns to Lisu. What a turn that was. He offloads to Mikhail Antonio, the former hammer who drills it in. Southampton 2, Aston Villa 1. One minute to go but thankfully, unlike the late goal against Fiorentina, it was just a consolation for the visitors. Final score 2-1. Three late goals in three games here. But Antonio's goal came in vain in the end as we held on for the three points. So finally, after no wins in five in all competitions, back on track. Desperately needed that one there at St. Mary's. And we keep pace with West Ham in fourth. You know, I've got to be honest here. I'm starting to buckle under the pressure. I'm the first to admit it. I'll always accept when I'm not playing very well. And right now is definitely a time where I'm not playing my best FIFA. I'm just, I'm just getting a little bit nervy. And I talk about it before. Like, for me, when it's like midway through the season or in the first half, you've got games which 
don't have that much importance because there's still so much a season to go. Normally, I'm on fire. You'll see me going to streaks of like six, seven wins on the trot. But when it starts to get a little bit nervy, when it starts to get a little bit tense, that's when I really struggle to handle the pressure. And mentally, psychologically, I just start to buckle a little bit. Now is the time because the reality is settling in. We've got a chance of winning a European honour in the Europa League. We've got a chance of making the top four and getting to the FA Cup final. I don't know if I can do all three. And right now, I'm really feeling it. It's getting real at the business end of the season. And for the fourth and final game of today's episode, Fiorentina, second leg, 1-1 in Tuscany, heading back to St. Mary's. I'm sick of this guy. Danny Ying scored a hat-trick against me for Aston Villa on match day one. He's now moved to the Serie A, yet I still can't avoid him. He bangs in the opener and almost got a second. Had it not been for Jordan Pick for making a great save, we would have been 2-0 down 16 minutes in. And this game had shades of the one against FC Mischieland, where we held a 3-0 lead coming back home for the second leg. And we almost went 3-0 down just past, just before the hour mark, sorry. So still down by a goal, needed to find a leveler, and we would as well. An action-packed first 25 minutes, and we found our equaliser through Che Adams talked about him earlier I think I've been a little bit too critical of Adams this year he's not been that bad he scores our equaliser puts us back on level terms and the momentum seemed to change and it was a really topsy-turvy tie half an hour in Bale so close to volleying in the goals give us the lead for the first time in the tie still tied at 1-1 but there were more goals in this game. It was such an open, action-packed game. There were so many yellow shirts getting sent forward in the game. Fiorentino playing really attacking football. And with 10 minutes to go before the break... Can you just retire now, please? Back at St. Mary's, he was their club record signing all those years ago. Danny Yings, bags of brace. He scored five goals against me in three games. Unbelievable for Aston Villa and now Fiorentina. I can't stop him. And in the second half, we were down by a goal. I've got to be honest here. I didn't expect Fiorentina to be continuing their onslaught of chances on my goal. I really thought they were going to ease off the pressure in the second half, sit on that one goal lead and try and defend it. But based on how the tie had gone and how we battled back from a goal down on two separate occasions, I guess I wasn't too surprised. But after that, header went over the bar from the corner. Oh, my goodness. Just please don't retire, Gareth. Bale once again rescued us in Florence with that last minute leveler and once again scores the second equaliser of the tie as he makes it 2 2 on a night and 3 3 over two legs. But I'll be honest here, whilst I was getting chances, I was getting opportunities, Fiorentina were having far more. 12 minutes to go, still tied at 2 2. A couple of great saves by Jordan Pickford kept us still on level terms for now, but it seemed as though we were clinging on for life in the final 12 minutes. Fiorentina Fiorentina had all the momentum. And you know those games of FIFA where you can barely get out of your half? It's literally like a training exercise. And you just can't seem to get any attacks going. And you just seem to be under the cosh for the remainder of the game. This was one of them. Five minutes to go. Still tied at 2-2. Desperate to force extra time. And Martin Darone's shot, which was well saved by Pickford, fell straight to Nicolas Gonzalez. And with three minutes to go in an episode of late goals galore... That one is the most heartbreaking. Final score at St. Mary's. Southampton 2. Fiorentina 3. Such a sickening way to lose the game and the tie. Three minutes to go. Pickford made an incredible save. Didn't know much about it really. But Gonzalez turns in the rebound. And Fiorentina win it. You can call it cruel if you like. But I'll say deserved. Yep, simple as that. As I said, I'd always present a highlights package fairly. You would have seen it during the game. For the most part, I was dominated. Had it not been for Pickford, that tie would have been over about an hour in. Instead, we were lucky to almost force extra time. In the end, we were beaten by the better side. Fiorentina progressed. It was a really even tie. Could have gone either way. But I think the better team have made it through. Our European adventure ends in the last day in our first ever season in the Europa League. But... Got to pick ourselves up. There's still an FA Cup semi-final to come and it might prove to be a blessing in disguise. Less games to play in the calendar and with seven games to go, we're now only four points behind David Moyes' West Ham and we've got a game in hand as well. The Champions League is still on even though the Europa League is gone. But that will end today's episode of The Realistic Career, guys. Big fan you watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. Please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode of The Realistic Career Mode. One of the biggest of this series. Do not miss it. It's massive. And I'll See you for it very soon.